Hello, good morning. I'm Evan Nelson. I'm a physical therapist and I'm a faculty associate in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program. And uh, so I think the context of the course in our program is important because some of the solutions that work for us may not work for you or, or at least maybe may need some modification. So our students in our Doctor of Physical Therapy program, they're all doctoral students who have completed undergrad and they're in a clinical doctorate program. And we have a lockstep curriculum. So we admit students and then they progress as a cohort through a three-year doctoral program. And um, the class size is 40. So moderately large. And the series that I teach in is our clinical medicine track. So how did I find myself with Canvas? Well, I took over this class this year. And regardless of which kind of teaching platform I was using for an online course website, I was going to be designing it and starting from scratch, essentially. And so I chose to use Canvas, given the information that had been distributed that some of our other vehicles may or may not be going away in the future on a quasi-unknown time frame. But Canvas <laughs> was a committed resource that the university had, had found themselves to. So I chose to put my development efforts and learn Canvas not because I wanted to be an early adopter, but because I felt that it would be the most efficient use of time. So some of the constraints that we have within our program is that we don't have a large or any sort of support structure to help us develop or maintain our course management software. That's really a, a faculty responsibility um, in the courses. Some of the courses that we teach are co-taught, so we have a shared professor, at least to, to share the workload a little bit. That's not the case for the courses that I'll be presenting today. Uh, it, was, it was ultimately on me. So balancing the time of the many activities that I'm choosing or asked to attend to, I didn't want to invest too much time and, um, and couldn't really invest a, a huge amount of time over the course of a work week into developing or managing content. So um, the the teaching need that I have is that this clinical medicine track is fitting a lot of purposes. We have students that are early in the doctoral training, and we have topics that range from medical diagnostic imaging to pharmacology to clinical decision making to identifying conditions that require referral to services other than physical therapy, and then kind of defining the scope of physical therapy and what we treat. So it really has a mixed bag of content and spans a a two semester course sequence. And so I'm going to show you some examples that I used from course one in the fall, and then also some examples from course two now in the spring, because some of the organization um, was an important factor in changing how I laid out course two compared to course one. And that, based on the early straw poll assessments that I've done, have improved students' usability of the content. So what did I want? I wanted the whatever platform I was using to be a comprehensive vehicle that could really be a central resource that didn't send students on too many tangential tracks, but could integrate as much content as possible, but allow students to learn outside of the lecture time that we have, to choose to go down to a deeper level of depth on a topic, or choose not to, and clearly present the course information of what they need to know, and differentiate that from what is nice to know and has more of an active learner choice decision about how far into that content they go. Um, the key things that I was looking for in my, in my Canvas platform is the diagnostic imaging component and how do we present images to students or resources to students that is uh, reflective of how we then view them in clinical practice and, and use. There's a lot of interaction and usability for the resources that we have in clinic. And that's one of the things that I'm struggling with and continue to struggle with. Um, but what I found so easy in Canvas is embedding content from external resources and making it look like it exists inside Canvas rather than sending them to YouTube or to my Kaltura site and sending them outside Canvas I bring that and embed it into my Canvas site so they look like it's just you know following along the path and 
is a, there's a little bit easier user friendliness to it, um, but I also feel like keeping people centrally focused on the course and in the course space um, has just helped their attention just a touch. So what have I tried? Um, well, I, I've tried uploading um, YouTube videos with great success. I've tried embedding Kaltura videos with great success, and it is so unbelievably time efficient, it boggles my mind every time I do it. Um, once you follow the steps about three times, you probably won't be able to forget it. It's, it's that easy. Um, image uploads, um, that's a version of embedded content, maybe a bit different than what you're looking for, but something that's really high in my priority screen, um, is variable in its effectiveness. So the, the struggling point is image modification is intensely time consuming. And so once you have your image, and it's a JPEG file or a PNG file or some other sort of image file, it's easy to upload that into, into Canvas or into um, some other site. But it's that modification time to get it to the finalized product. And then once it's there, it's designed to be a still image that's not really interactive and adaptable. So things that I've tried, uh, direct image upload. I've tried linking to my box files to get to these these image files. Um, and one of the other details about my struggling point is these are someone else's medical images. They're de-identified, but I don't love the idea of my students being able to download somebody's image or a medical image, and then I lose control of how that's used or where it's used. So um, while I can stay within the bounds for educational use, I don't want to be connected with something that goes outside the bounds of responsible, responsible use. So that downloading of images is a gray area that I just don't really want any responsibility for. So I'm trying to restrict downloading of content from, from our course site at this time. So let me show you some examples of, of things that I've used and how I set things up. So this is my first rendition of a, of a Canvas course, and it occurred in the fall. And I used the modules page as kind of my central theme. Having been a Learn at UW user for a long time, I kind of utilized the Learn at UW organizational format when I built a Canvas course for rendition one. So it's very outline driven, and the modules made sense to me. And I list all our different course units, and I, I hidden a lot of it here, but then underneath that I kind of loaded up a lot of files, a lot of PDF files, which is what our students prefer in, um, in kind of an outline fashion. This is one way that I embedded, um, embedded some images. file, but I was able to put an image within, within the PDF file. And that was, that was easy for me, and it's what our students are used to. Now, example of where I embedded some content, what you can see is that the outline got incredibly long by the end of the semester. So now here's an example of a of a video. So I click the link and the video is the video is active. It looks like I'm still in side canvas, but this is a YouTube video that I've embedded and put the code in on a canvas page. Click it and play as long as they're connected to the internet. So this is one of the situations where rather than sending them out to YouTube through a link, and now they exist in the YouTube site, and after this video plays, another YouTube video plays, and all of a sudden they're 53 minutes into a YouTube expedition, 
<laughs> when this five minute video ends, they're back in my course only. So Evan, when you have a choice, do you always try to keep them in Canvas? Yes. For that reason? <coughs> For that reason. It's, there are fewer clicks, there's less chance that the link kind of gets broken, disrupted, altered, and everything stays centrally located and it's a little more time efficient and fewer clicks to complete the task. Um, so the cumulative effect of clicks is an important variable, uh, and that's why I try to keep them in Canvas whenever possible. So um, let's switch to. Before you do, Evan, and yep. ask the PDF files that you're embedding. Are those? Are you storing those in Box in Google Drive? Where, what are you doing with your? Like I assume those are relatively large PDFs with the images. Yeah. Where are you storing them, or the, do you have them in Canvas? To date, I've put them in Canvas, okay. in my files page. So let me go back to that, and I'll show you one of the changes. So if I click files for the course that I was just showing you, it's kind of this messy list. There are some folders, there are some files. It, it became a mess, and this is where I was used to learn UW, where a messy file repository was only a problem for me because I was the only one with access to that file repository. As I move forward and I learn more, yeah. I may start linking to a Google Drive or a, or a box file and kind of embedding the PDF file into my courses more because then I don't have to remember to re-upload that new version of the whatever file that I right. created. In 2018, it's different yeah. than 2016. So, so far, you're just any documents you're storing in. Okay. So far, yes. As a just a, a, a point yeah. here, yeah. this is what we encourage. We encourage people to not store them in their file, in, in the Canvas course itself, for a couple of reasons. One, it's much easier to update and fix stuff in, in Google Docs or Box. But two, the smaller these courses are, the better performance is for you but also for the rest of campus because they're all going through one server. So if you've got a really bloated course yeah. with lots of files on it, you're actually slowing down all of your colleagues. We don't want to do that. You know, that, that's also a problem I had because I have a lot of PowerPoints with videos embedded that I use to show in, in my lecture. But if I upload the PowerPoint files on the, the file, uh, part of Canvas, it, it takes up all the space, right now, and, and so, uh, you know, so, yeah. um, it, it, if you link to, say, Box or something, and PowerPoint files in there, that will solve yeah. the problem. Box, Google Drive, um, Microsoft Office 365 is going to have an integration coming no. soon, no. someday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Evan, are you going to show us a place where you actually link to Box? Um, so I, I, I tried linking to it, and I ended up deleting all of them because it wasn't really fitting my needs at the time. Um, so I don't have any active uh, box links in either of these courses. Now the video, or not the video, the first image that you showed yeah. looks like it loaded from box. Did no, it always That's what it always says. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just canvas. Okay. That's, I think canvas somehow uses box. Interesting. All right. Sir, on the network side, are students logging in from the clinics? So I work at UHS, and, and we have some funky, um, sometimes folks can access if we're on our network, sometimes they can't. Um, so there are network issues depending on where, so I've, learners are everywhere in auxiliaries within UHS in schools and colleges. So have you, are there any sorts of issues with your students around um, firewall network issues? Not that we know of today. Not, okay. You know, our students who have been using Canvas are at the front end of their program. Uh -huh. and our program has 
So they're not in the it's, clinic quite as much yet. It's simultaneously clinic to, okay. to teaching. It's you're in class, then you go to the clinic, then you come back to okay. class. And most of our clinic is in the back half of our program. Okay. Um, but we haven't had any reports of, of yeah. viral problems. Okay, cool. Thank you. A little more time for Q&A. Yeah, sorry. So, so you see how messy these files are. You know, if I switch to my spring class, one of the organization things that I found to make things a lot cleaner is to use pages a lot more. And, um, and then also adapting my file structure so that my file format in Canvas represents my organization of the content in my modules as well. And the students have really appreciated this, and it's just a lot cleaner. Now this is also important if you're, if you're loading all your files into Canvas, which is kind of what I'm doing, they're all PDF files. So do you give your students access to the files uh, tab in Canvas? Yeah. This is something we can talk about after, during the Q&A. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big point. I think that yeah. there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, so an example of how pages have helped me is in diagnostic imaging, which is one of our units, I created a, a page that outlines the unit with the objectives written in it, additional links to our, our handouts and our course files, um, some I can create some links or some embedded content for a guest lecture, and the students have appreciated this layer of, of detail. Um, and it's easy enough to embed a, a short video clip in here as well. Well, and these links that you've embedded, they're all embedded. Uh, the, 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 the first icon there just opens them up in this. So it does really keep them in that space. It does. So this, they could have gone to files to get to this. They could click on the link through our modules page or click on it through this page page. So they have three different routes to access the content based on kind of how it makes the most sense to them. The Can you click on one? Yeah, sure. click, click on that little uh, magnifying glass guy. Because the map opens it up right there. So they're still on that page and they can access the questions above it with the learning objectives or, or whatever underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
navigation. I'll write it down. Yeah. So what would I uh, what would I change? Um, I feel like some of the changes I already made since I had an immediate chance to make some of these changes for semester two that I learned from in semester one, which is the organization and to utilize some pages and keep a similar organizational format between my file structure and my pages structure and then my modules structure. I don't use the syllabus very much because our students don't use the syllabus very much. Sound terrible, but the <laughs> function in the function in Canvas, our students don't use because only a small percentage of our courses are using Canvas. Our students use the paper version that we provided them, and they print it or they save the file and they look at it. Uh, that's how they know what the course objectives are and when their next exam is. Um, mostly when their next exam is, and so. I don't have to utilize the robust syllabus function that's provided in here because our students really wouldn't use it at this time. Um, and then the last thing that I, I would, I'm still looking for a great method to change is how do I create a vehicle that allows students to interact with still images of x-rays where I don't have to spend an enormous number of hours putting in arrows to identify points so that I can then say, what's this bone, name this problem, what type of fracture is this? And and that's the limiting factor that I have right now, um, is that I can't do that inside Canvas because it's not a video editing or image editing software. I have to do it outside. It takes so long. And to do it with enough images to create a meaningful learning experience, the image time to, to modify an image or two isn't bad, but multiplied by 100 case scenarios now I need to block half my semester just to add an image.